cannot see anything. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Hurricane Sally. And there you have it, yet another hurricane coming my way. Now, I know it could be worse, I could be taking a direct hit. Thankfully, I'm not, and I do feel bad for those that are in a direct path. I really do hope that everyone's safe and that there's no loss of life and very minimal property damage. So, my thoughts to everyone in that path. Okay, so, I mentioned in the last video that my tuner, Brian, had a few things he wanted me to check. Basically, what he saw the last time I did a data log was that there was an error code stored in the computer, a code 42 for the EST, which is like this module here, that happens to be in the base of the distributor, which I had already replaced, and I think, uh, I thought I had an extra one. I know I have an extra one, though. <laughs> I already replaced it once. I thought it was bad. What it ended up being is one of these two plugs that goes to the distributor. There's a gray one and there's a black one. Uh, the previous owners took it to some garage or something somewhere and the mechanics probed the crap out of them with, the with a uh, multimeter to the point that they broke. So he was telling me they were having an issue. Basically that code says that there's a grounding or power issue with the electronic spark time timing which is that module to the ECM, the computer. So when I knew these wires here, this is the second connector. See, this big, huge red wire is the power. This white one is the tack. Now the white one looks really bad. It's because it's a smaller wire. It's kind of, you might be able to see it's a little bit cut open here. Look at this red wire. It's kind of deformed a little bit too. It doesn't come out straight. So I'm a little bit concerned that maybe there's some damage to the wires in here. There's only so many wires. And even though it's making a connection, if a lot of these wires are broke, we could be losing voltage. So maybe instead of 14 volts, it's only seeing 12, and the coil's not firing as good as it should. So to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and get this on. I got the soldering iron heating up. We're going to solder and heat shrink this. Make sure it's weather tight and as good as connection as possible. We're going to get that on. Um, he also wanted me to check the connection between the EST, the, the connector down there, to the ECM. Um, I've looked at it. I haven't probed it. I really don't want to have to pull all that stuff out and, and mess with it. And basically what I'm thinking is, um, he told me he saw the code, but then I told him, like, I haven't had a check engine light. And... Uh, even the whole way to the car show, there was no check engine light, but he's seeing it because it's stored in the computer. What I think happened is, if you remember, he had me advance the timing with the vacuum gauge, and then basically had to unplug. There's a brown, a tan and black wire, a brown and black wire. There's a single plug that you have to undo when you set timing. When you do base timing, you do it without the computer interfering with it. So you unplug that, and then that's going to set that EST code. So I think what he's seeing is whenever I did that that code is probably still in the computer so I have the battery disconnected I have checked the wire I did earlier before I turned the car around because of the hurricane um, if you notice it's kinda the hoods here facing this way I had it backed in yesterday and I already pulled that connector off and I checked everything and everything looks good it doesn't look like any of the wires are broke or anything everything looks in really good shape all the wiring in this car looks phenomenal for its age and miles so I don't think I have a problem with that, so I'm not going to dig too much in and probe that. Um, but what he wants me to do is, like I'm doing, disconnect the battery. And then he wants me to do a cold start, um, data log, reset this thing. We'll do a cold start data log. He also thinks maybe this IAC might be defective, but we're going to do this before I spend another $70 on a new IAC. So let's go ahead and solder this in and then... Uh, check back so here's the new plug and I think you can see here the way this kind of it's kind of forced to bend over a little bit to clear the hood so any break right there is kind of bad and here's the, uh, the second plug you can see right here the solder and heat shrink I did a while back to replace this one so power comes into here and then it comes in so it's a good possibility if 
I was losing power through here could affect power in that to the EST, but I think we're good right now. All right, now for my new segment, mean comments or dumb comments, whatever. I'm gonna name it, I'm not sure. Um, I know I said I was gonna drive the car. Hold on here, I think this is, yeah. There we go, that was a little bit crooked. Uh, but with the hurricane, really can't do that. So, um, my first one is, where is it here? I need to stop deleting these and save them. Okay, so I did a video when I was in Russia on my uh, mother-in-law's apartment. It's really common to see in Russia these really tall buildings, and they're all like apartments and that. So, um, when I was there, I got a bad respiratory infection. And it was the last day there, and I started off the video like, Hey, sorry everybody if I'm, I'm coughing or if I'm sniffling a lot. I, I have a infection, and I'm leaving tomorrow, so this is my last day to film. And of course it doesn't stop somebody from saying, Dude, blow your nose. Come on, man. Read the damn comments before you make something stupid. And then I don't know why that too. Everybody has to compare Russia and Europe. Because then his comments... It's average European radiator, bathtubs, and towel rails, fuse boxes, stone walls. Who, who cares? I'm not talking about Europe. The video is about this apartment that is in Russia. Every single time, they want to be contributed to the same thing. We had the same thing in Europe. Don't care. Don't care. I wasn't doing a video about Europe. The video was about apartment in Russia. So, you know, I get that a lot. Like, oh, it's the same thing in Europe. Okay, congratulations. Who cares? I also had somebody comment, like, there in Russia, there's a lot of steam pipes running everywhere, and they run into the apartments. That's how everybody heats their apartments, through normal radiators, but the steam is provided by the country or whatever, however that is, but there's big pipes that come in. So in the bathroom, there's a chrome pipe that comes out, and you can put your towels on there to help dry them, I guess, or maybe make them warm, but I have one guy... What's the big deal? I thought you had everything in America. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we have dryers, dude. A lot of people over there don't have dryers. They have washers only. So, I mean, you know, it's like, do your research before you make dumb comments. And I know that for a lot of people here that haven't watched, like, the Russian videos, it probably not make any uh, sense. And then uh, I have one guy. I did a video on HHR. And I know this might sound a little bit simple, and there's going to be two comments on this one about an air filter replacement. Now, that car wasn't the easiest thing in the world. They put the air box like on top of the motor and then there was like two uh, tubes that you had to intake. One came out of the fender going into the air box and then the other one came out went to the engine and then you had a mass airflow sensor you had to disconnect and there was like eight or nine torque screws that had to come open and open it. it didn't make it easy. So I did a video on it. Somebody had asked me to. Some guy made a comment on what you need to do is get you a half inch hole saw and punch, punch a bunch of holes, drill a bunch of holes in the bottom of the air box and then that thing will breathe and you'll get like three miles a gallon better and I'm like dude no. First off like I said there's a snorkel that went into the fender so it's pulling cold air in from there. You want to drill a bunch of holes into an air box that's sitting right on top of the engine so you could suck in a bunch of hot air. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Plus, if there's any water or moisture, sucking it up into the engine. There's a reason they, man they make these things. Yes, generally aftermarket we can approve on some things, but generally when they manufacture something, it's for a reason. They test it out in water and snow and stuff like that. You just don't go uh, redneck engineer and drill a bunch of holes in the air box. Come on, it was a HHR. It was a 2.2 liter. It had like a hun maybe 100 horsepower. That what you were expecting out of that and then uh, oh I have to go over here to studio and look at it um, he says my video is garbage do yourself a favor and invest in a tripod now like I said again this was a how-to video on a car now number one in the early days of YouTube you know first off you're more than welcome to start your own YouTube channel go ahead anything and I don't even have one here do I even GoPros are expensive oh hold on 
Okay, so some people do their whole YouTube channel off a of cell phone. Nothing wrong with that. You use what you got. Uh, even a good or decent GoPro costs money. Now, I've started out on the Hero 3 and I've worked my way up to this is the latest one, the Hero 8. This thing does fantastic stable footage. If you watched my last video when I was walking around the car show, I used this. You can see a slight up and down in it, but it is pretty stable. So, dude, you're going to make a comment about that. Why don't you go ahead and make a donation to the channel then if you think that I need more equipment and all that. You know, sometimes when you're doing these how-tos, you have the GoPro on your head so you can see. Because there's no place to put this stuff. And then he wants to talk about tripods. Okay, let's flip this thing around. There you have it. Is that what you're talking about, moron? There it is. Benro. Very nice carbon fiber tripod. It's what I use. Yeah, so when I'm here in the garage and I'm just steady talking to a camera, it's on a tripod. If you notice, my videos are extremely stable. But this isn't something I, I could afford and, and start out. This was things that progressively got there. I was only be able to monetize my channel within the past year or so. So, you know, stupid comments. Oh, invest in a tripod. Dude, why don't you try running a channel? And you know, the, the worst thing is you get a lot of these comments from somebody that has... Uh, no videos posted whatsoever, no anything. So I think that's all I have for the uh, mean and dumb comments <laughs> for for now. Let me know what you think of the segment. Um, like I, said, I can't reveal names. YouTube will say that's hate, and I really don't want to direct a bunch of negative stuff on there, so I won't mention names. And half the time when I do this stuff, I just block these people. I don't ever want to hear from them. So, all right. Um, Time to get the laptop, and we're going to go ahead and do a cold start and data log. And we're going to see how that goes, and I'll wait to hear from Brian. I also have an impromptu camping trip coming up here in a couple of days. Um, I started bugging the dealer, and I started getting started sending out some emails. Uh, when we bought it, the cab over the, over the driver's part, there's a bed, and the middle part flips up to allow you to get in and out of the driver compartment easily but you could flip that down there so you could sleep well where it hinges it was never sewn and it, it was all buckled open so they had to order a new bed also my RV has tank heaters there's like these heating pads that are glued to the bottom of the holding tanks that warm up so that way in cold weather if we're ever down to where it's freezing I could turn on these tank heaters and they'll keep my tanks from freezing and busting open we took delivery of it, the one had fallen off, it was sitting on the ground. Or, well, actually the delivery driver kind of tied it up and kind of hid it in there and that's why I had an RV inspector check it out before we took delivery of the RV and he found it to be up there so he undid it, he undid it and let it let the mechanics there at the dealership know that, hey, this tank heater fell off and this, your delivery driver, whoever transported it, dropped off but the parts are finally in so because we have to go all the way over to St. Augustine Florida which is I don't know six or seven hours it takes longer with RV uh, we're just gonna go there we're gonna get it fixed in the morning and then we're gonna stop at a campsite so not really a planned thing but we do have an impromptu camping trip coming up so let's start this thing up and uh, that will you know it's funny no sooner did I get the laptop and put this down I got a notification of another comment, and it was that same guy about the tripod. He obviously didn't read my comment that I told him I do have a tripod, but you can't use it when you're filming car videos under a hood. And he says, well, just get a tripod, at least try. And I was like, read my comment, dude, you know how much money I spent on a tripod? I said, you're more than welcome to start your own channel. Wow, man, some people are freaking morons. All right, so what they want me to do is, uh, I guess I gotta turn the car on. <laughs> All right, down here it says DA connected, meaning it's talking to the computer. Showing the IAC at 160. So that's what they also want to see too, what happens to the IAC when I turn it like on versus off. 
Oh wow, look at this stuff back here, guys. Get one of those little heavier bands. And just for reference. Ooh. Sam Key is actually messaging me right now on Instagram asking me how I'm doing. <laughs> so this is the current weather right now as you're texting me. It just picked up. It was just a light drizzle. But that's what happens. You get these little bands that come through. So. Alright, I know you guys don't want to hear me talk. I want to hear this thing start. corner where it says 160 that's the IAC the idle air control valve that's the maximum position it can be at it's obviously not doing anything uh, I think that's probably half the issue yeah, I revved it up a little bit and it started to move and I turned the AC on the car stalled because it's not doing anything oh god wow all right everyone so uh this hurricane turned a little bit more uh, my way than was originally predicted. So here you go. I'm going to try to get this video uploaded today. We haven't had power since sometime last night. Um, I got my anemometer from the uh, drone. Try to take the wind reading. Oh, this is stupid. Yeah, why the frick am I out here? I'll tell you what, man, I am glad that that garage just provided no trees fall. But look at all the debris already out here in the yard. I think you can pretty much see how bad this stuff is. So yeah, I actually had the video done last night, but I was like, oh, I'll wait till the morning and I'll go ahead and just walk around and kind of survey, you know, whatever happened. I wasn't expecting this to come on full blast. So last I heard this thing might be a category three uh, before it made landfall. I'm not even sure where it's at, but yeah. So <laughs> right now we're in the middle of this thing. So uh not going to be tuning anymore on the car, not going to be doing anything for a little bit until we get power. So, like I said, I don't have internet. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to hotspot this off the car or off my uh, cell phone. So, I think today is what, Wednesday. So, if you see this today, you know I got it uh, up and going. Oh, wow. Looks like my whole fence blew that way, and probably that tree is the only thing holding it up. Yeah. All right, well, at least, you know, my cars are pretty much safe. That thing's rated for 155 miles an hour. All right, guys. Appreciate the support as usual. I'll check in with you later. Uh, we're still going to try to roll out of here. We got to get the RV in for service, but we're not going to leave with the winds like this. No way I'm driving that thing, so. But I we'll probably leave sooner or, you know, later, probably than sooner. But Oh, yeah, let me show you something in here before we go all right everybody you know i'm gonna have to have my coffee you know it i'm not gonna let a storm get in the way of having the coffee so here we go as somebody used to camp full time well prepared to make coffee and cook no matter what so here we are from powerless florida uh, i'm not sure when the power be back on like i said i'm gonna try to get the video loaded today for you so if it is Obviously, everything worked. If not, take care, everyone. Stay safe. 
like, share, comments, appreciate it, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.